America's favorite sports starting to have some popularity problems, and among the challenges on football's list is how to make the game safer. Derek Berkeley went on special assignment to find out if maybe a drastic change to the game is the answer. Helena author Brian D'Ambrosio recently set out to chronicle the history of Montanans in the NFL. While interviewing men who reached the pinnacle of their sport decades ago, he kept hearing an unexpected theme. If they could do it all over again, they'd, one guy told me he would have played baseball. And I, that, that, that surprised me because I thought personally that we were going to say, um, yeah, I did it, um, I'm glad I did it, I would have done it over again, but that wasn't the response that I got in many cases. The health issues of retired players continue to make news and clearly provide a cautionary tale. Youth teams across the nation have seen their participation numbers drop, and players in their primes are stepping away from the game like never before. Former Montana High School Player of the Year Andrew Grindy recently retired after suffering a concussion while suiting up for Yale. Players keep hearing about these risks, but don't always keep safety in mind on the field. I do think that in practice you see people hold up differently and do things differently. I still think that during a game, it's hard. When you're in the heat of battle and you've got a guy, you know, coming across, they still want to be that, they want to make that highlight reel. Some feel the equipment designed for protection can actually cause a safety problem. I do think that helmets, shoulder pads, some of those kinds of things give people a little bit of a feeling of invincibility. Helmets have become so, so much lighter and, and we saw a span where they were used as a weapon almost. Football is trying to change and trying to limit hits by and to the head. So coaches are borrowing techniques from a similar sport with a few key differences. Rugby style tackling takes the head out of the equation where typically it was hit him in the numbers and now they're looking at this other style of tackling which takes the head out of it and it's more of a wrap. Football players for years, including myself, were taught to put your head across an opponent to make a tackle. Now this puts your head in danger of a helmet to helmet hit or helmet to knee if you go low. Now rugby style tackling teaches you to go on the other side and drive with your shoulder while keeping your head out of the play. Rugby players develop this style of tackling out of necessity. They don't wear helmets, so they have to avoid big hits to the head. So what if you took helmets out of football? Could it actually make the game safer? Many in the game admit they have thought about the possibility. I've said a long time, just take the face masks off or take their helmets off and, and you won't have those collisions anymore. But then, uh, you know, it's, it's easy to say, but uh, they, they still need uh, the protection. I wouldn't mind seeing an experiment. I don't know who would lead that off, but I don't think it would take anything away from the game at all. Realistically, such a drastic change would cause plenty of controversy and anger many who like the game the way it is. Would that be a sport you would want to watch, football without pads? Well, that's rugby. You know, and, and uh, probably not. If you change it, it's going to lose popularity. There, there's a reason that, that people like the game and, and uh, some of the, the bigger hits are, are the, the ones that people like to see. So while the need to change continues to battle against the love of the game, like two linemen in the trenches, the future of football is at stake. On special assignment, Derek Berkeley, MTN News. Rugby style tackling started to get a lot of attention when the Seattle Seahawks started promoting the method three years ago. Many call it hawk tackling.